So hello everybody and welcome to another Power BI video. This time we are going to talk about field parameters. So I've been doing some customer work and implementing them and they're actually quite cool. Uh, especially when you want to have everything in your canvas to change, beautiful. When you want to have one-on-one -on -one implemented, not that much. But for this one-on-one, -on -one, it's actually quite cool. Um, this is what I'm going to show you how to do. So the complication for this is that this chart has two different fields that you need to change when this is changing. Also, to have the conditional formatting be correctly done. And there are other things. So let me show you how I build this. And this file will be available for download at Curval Download Center. I don't know the name yet, but I will put it on the, the description. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so Northwind dataset, you know how it goes. And what we're going to do is what you saw in the beginning of the video. The first thing that we're going to do is basically create the new field parameters. Let me tell you this, make sure that you're opening the file with the latest version of Power BI Desktop. I've been opening it in the old versions because I need to have them because of the field, you know, the format pane. And it's been driving me mad when it doesn't work. Latest version, people. Okay, so let's create our new parameter, field parameter. And the, you, you need to start thinking how this is going to work. So what we are going to have is on the first field parameter, we're going to have sales here and the um, variance here. So the difference between uh, previous year and current year. Uh, and the previous year one here, we will do later. Okay, so let's get those first. So we're going to go to field. I'm going to call this accumulated, no accumulated. You can call it anything that you like. And here we're going to grab sales and variance, isolated and accumulated. Okay. So sales, sales accumulated, and then we're going to have variance, accumulated and isolated. Create. And I don't need this slicer, by the way. We could have removed it from the beginning. So let's look at the table. This is how it looks. So we have the names of the measures. We have the um, uh, measures itself and the order. So the, what we're going to create now is the slicer that I had that will change from isolated to um, accumulated. We're not then going to use that. We're going to change it. But for now, you to see that everything is working. So. What I'm going to do is create a new column in this table. I'm going to call it whatever type that will do an if statement. So it's going to do switch true and then goes contain string, contain string that is going to differentiate accumulated and isolated. So I know that all the fields or all the measures that are accumulated contain the word accumulated, ac. So if it contains that word, then it is an accumulated measure. Otherwise, it's an isolated one. So there we have the type. So now we can put that as this slicer instead. So grab it and then put it like that up here and then get rid of the that one and then isolate it, accumulate it. As you can see, nothing happens, right? By the way, make sure that you have the latest May version. Just say it again because it's so important. Um, but what we need to do is to connect these visuals with the slicer. So to do that, we need to change these sales with the parameter. And as you can see, it's showing us two the isolation, isolated measure for sales and for um, the var variance. And we don't want that. We just want to have sales in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have, I would like to actually have that column as um, a filter for this one. And I'm going to say here, I just want to have the sales ones that one and that one. And then when I click in here, it'll show only only that, you see, accumulated. So now it's working already, really cool. 
And then we need to do the same with the variance. So I'm going to go to remove that one. I'm going to put that in and I need to do the exact same thing. I need to put this one in and then make sure, don't select anything so you can actually select everything, grab the variance only. And then when I start clicking, you see that it starts working? What it breaks here is the conditional formatting. Let me show you. So if I am in here and I go to columns and conditional formatting, this does not work with field parameters yet. I don't know if they have any plans to do it, but at the moment it doesn't. So it takes whatever field has been chosen and does this gradient thing, it will not work here. We need to have a measure for that. And it's actually a lot easier than it looks. So what we need to do, let me show you. So when something here is um, selected, I'm going to create a new measure and I'm going to call this conditional formatting. And for now, I'm just going to write select value for accumulated and not accumulated. So what this is going to do is it's going to tell us which measure has been selected. There is a problem with this though, I'm going to show you. It says here, uh, this is a part of a composite key and it cannot be used in an expression. Okay, whatever. So what we need to do basically is to have another type column that is going to be equal to the first column. And that we can actually use in here. Type 2. It will work. And then I can put... So, and now to see how this is working, what we're going to do is copy this, make it a table, and put that conditional formatting formula there so you can see the actual value that's been selected. So it tells you that if it is isolated, then it's the var previous year is so that it's been used. And if it is accumulated, it changes. So you see, it grabs which measure is being selected. And when we have that, we can do anything. So we're going to continue building in this conditional formatting measure now. We're going to say var select the field, for example, you can call it anything you like. And then return. And now we're going to do um, the conditional formatting. So we're going to do if, again, switch through is an if statement. And here you need to be careful with the order. So <laughs> it works well. Let me copy these so you don't have to see me type it. It takes take forever. So, selected field on both, thank you. So now, it says if the selected field is the previous year accumulated and is bigger than zero, the same with the ISO, bigger than zero, then green, otherwise red, right? And then you'll see that it changes the color here. So here we have all greens and there we have the red when it's negative. And now that we have that, we can go to our columns, conditional formatting, and change these to the field value, which is going to be the new measure. And voila, working as expected. Beautiful, okay? Great. Now, we have just one piece of the puzzle left, well, two, but let's take one at a time. You see when I do accumulate and isolate it, that the values here for previous year remain being isolated, right? Because we haven't on this chart put anything here. We cannot add the previous year here when we're filtering. It's just not going to work. So we need to have a new parameter for this one, for the previous year values. So I'm going to go to new parameter, fields, and I'm going to call these previous year accumulated, not accumulated. And here we're going to get all the previous year, the isolated and accumulated. Don't want to have the slicer to the page. 
Thank you very much, but no. Let's take a look at how that thing works. It's exactly the same. We need to have now a new column here that will do the same that we did for the other ones that create this isolated and accumulated. So it responds to the filter. And uh, we go to new column. We're going to write type. Type. And that is again a if a statement, true, that says contain strings, the same as, as before, contain string for the previous year accumulated, not accumulated, accumulated, blah, blah. accumulated, accumulated, yeah, isolated. Right. So now we have them categorized also, and now we need to go to the model, and we're going to use that field to make a relationship between them and use it as the filter. So we put the new parameter on the y-axis. This one we're going to replace by our type, and now Voila. Do you see that the values are accumulated? So here we have previous year accumulated, sales accumulated, and here we have isolated. How cool is this? Now, the last thing that you can do, as you can see, Power BI does a good job changing the title already. It does it dynamically, which is quite neat. Uh, one thing that you can do is if you wanted to call it something else, you can actually do that. You can go to Titles. Um, it's in general here and here you can actually use the parameter name you can create a column uh, that will change that if you want you can call it what you want you see it's actually quite easy so yeah <laughs> it's, it's a long video sorry for that but it, it's quite cool what you can do now again I would love to have the possibility to change it individually on each visual that would be very very neat but when you want to do it across a report again for financial uh, purposes this is quite cool to change from um, isolated to accumulated or there are tons of variations of these it works beautifully okay so i hope you enjoyed the video i will see you again next week with a new one take care